There's sometimes confusion uh, when working with Mark Edit around which version of the application you should download. So I'm going to walk through why you should care um, about the 32 or 64 bit and which one's probably the one for you. So when working with Mark Edit, one of the primary uh, concerns that would come up um, over the course of the application pre 7 uh, was two things. First, um, Windows was in the transition from 32 to 64 bit. Um, and the second was a number of users that worked in organizations that didn't allow the, their individual accounts to be um, run as administrators. So those were two barriers potentially um, when keeping users um, to uh, downloading and updating their application. So let's start with the 32-bit or 64-bit. So in Windows, uh, traditionally uh, Windows is run on 32-bit systems. Um, Mark Edit uh, has both a 32 and 64 bit download here. Um, the 32 bit can be run either in the traditional 32 bit version of Windows and the 64 bit version. Uh, what's the difference? Uh, the primary difference is how Mark Edit has to interact with the registry. Um, in a 32 bit version of Windows, uh, Mark Edit must install 32 bit versions of the dependency files. Uh, because a 32-bit version of the application um, can't uh, access a 64-bit version of a dependency. So if you're running on a 32-bit version of Windows, that's great. The application configures all of its um, components and dependencies to run in 32-bit mode. When you're in a 64-bit version of Windows, um, Windows has a 32-bit emulation mode, um, which is how 32-bit programs run. So Mark Edit actually has to force itself to run into 32-bit mode, which means that it also has to bring with it um, the YAS dependencies uh, for Z39.50, as well as the Saxon dependencies. Um, it has to configure those for 32-bit um, application running uh, because you can't access um, a 64-bit conversion, the uh, application doesn't, Windows doesn't allow you to do that. Um, within MarkEdit itself, uh, if you're unsure which version um, of the application you're running once you've installed it, uh, the program will tell you um, whether you're running a 32-bit or a 64-bit version by accessing uh, the help and the um, computer uh, properties. Um, so I'll go ahead and open MarkEdit. And so you would find that under help and system information. Uh, it'll tell you right here um, your system type. In my case, is 64-bit. Uh, the operating system that's running on is Windows Pro 10 Pro. Uh, the framework version that's being run on is 4.6 plus. This is actually 4.7 something. Uh, 4.62 is the minimum requirement. And then it gives you the auto update version. This is the version that MarkEdit uses to keep track of what version is being used. Uh, MarkEdit has both a build version and a auto update version. Those do not necessarily match. So right here is the build version, uh, 7169, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that basically tells you how often um, I compile the program. Um, this is the actual version here that's used for auto updating. All right, so this tells me it's running 64-bit version. Um, once I've installed in, uh, Mark Edit, um, and this tells me right here the install type is user. So what this tells me is that I've installed this as a non-administrative user in 64-bit. And from here on out, if I use the auto updating tools, Mark Edit will select this version um, as part of my updating process. So that brings up um, the, the user type. So in each version of the 32 and 64-bit version, so I'll go ahead and select 64, uh, there are two downloads that are available to you. These are the exact same downloads. Um, the difference primarily is how MarkEdit configures itself um, when interacting with the registry and allowing um, users to, um, different users to access the program um, and the uh, permission requirements necessary in order to uh, download and update the program. So uh, for most users um, in large academic organizations, um, they're starting to shift towards not allowing users to have administrative access. This is actually a good security policy. So in order to allow MarkEdit to run um, in organizations where um, they have a, a, a say like a, a standard image, um, where it would be very difficult to put MarkEdit into that standard image, 
uh, there's an option here to download MarkEdit to run um, as a non-administrator. What this does is this installs MarkEdit into your user profile only um, and allows you to access, the only you to access the application inside of that sandbox. Uh, this is probably the most secure way to run MarkEdit because it limits the impact of where the application is installed as well as keeps the application outside of the um, outside of the programs directory um, and requiring it to store any components inside of maybe a systems folder. Um, it also limits the, um, the uh, resources that are accessed in the registry to just the user hive, which is only, uh, uh, only impacts the individual user profile and can be accessed with user permissions. Um, if you are an administrator or you have administrative uh, download capacity if you have multiple users on the computer and you want all of those users to have access to mark edit if you are a uh, university organization that packages and pushes installations through something like a, uh, 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 the, the software software distribution client or um, something like uh, I think it's land desk you can use the administrative download and this provides you with an MSI that has an installer that has some configuration options that would allow you to push the application um, through to the individual user's machines as an administrative download. And that will install MarkEdit into the programs directory like most traditional programs. It moves, it installs um, the uh, uh, registry elements both at the user and the, um, the, the system level. Uh, so that uh, components that need to be registered um, can be accessed uh, across user profiles. Um, and so uh, it's, a, it's a little bit more of an invasive download, partly because it, ha it has to be because of the way Windows works in order for um, MarkEdit to be um, accessible across multiple user profiles. There are specific places that the application needs to be loaded and needs to be um, registered. Um, it's really a user preference. Uh, my personal, um, on all the machines that I work with, um, because uh, I, I prefer um, Mark Edit to be run in a sandbox, um, I use it uh, as the non-administrative version. Um, and so it installs only within my administrative sandbox, uh, my, my user sandbox and works in that space. Um, at my organization, uh, we have a, a common image and we push Mark Edit um, through that image to the um, multiple users that would use the application through the um, software client that we use, the software distribution client. Um, and so we use the administrative download for that um, because these machines, um, some of these machines have multiple users. Um, and so we want those machines to be able to, uh, those multiple users to have access to the application for the work that they do. So it's really up to the user. Um, but the most important thing to understand is that whether you use the non-administrative version or the administrative version, ultimately you're getting the same application. Um, you get the same functionality. The primary difference and the main reason why you would probably choose one over the other is um, whether you um, have a machine where you have multiple users accessing MarkEdit at a time. If you have multiple users accessing MarkEdit on a PC, the administrative version is definitely the one you're going to want to use. Um, if you prefer uh, to have um, the application stored in your programs directory, then the administrative version would be the one that you'd want to install. Um, but really, it's, a, it's something that for most users will be uh, likely a choice that you decide to make uh, in terms of which one you feel more comfortable using.